All right, welcome back everybody. My name's Austin. Traditional markets are tanking right now and this isn't your favorite altcoin. This is the stock market. As of Friday, the Dow fell 350 points Friday, capping off the worst week for Wall Street since the financial crisis. Now, I'm not saying that the next US slash global, global recession is happening today. I mean, why would it, right? Especially when the governments and the Fed, they just keep printing money, kicking this can down the road to try and fix the crisis of unsustainable debt, negative interest rates. I mean, how's this end? Really, how does this end? Let me play you a 30 second clip from the What Bitcoin Did podcast, interviewing macroeconomist, hedge fund manager, Travis Kling. Just how much longer can we keep kicking this can down the road? And that started to rear its head recently in terms of increasing the, the money supply through this, this repo market dollar shortage situation, which, which, yeah, because yeah. that keeps coming up. Right. And, you know, that was something I'd never even heard of before. I think a lot of people had never heard of before. And it was suddenly a new crisis. Yeah. So it's, so, so, so this is when you start to talk about cracks in the system, this is a great example of, uh, of cracks starting to show up in the system. And the, the repo market that blew out at the end of September and continues to not function as normal currently is a symptom of, of, of this broader situation that's been dubbed the, the, the dollar shortage. But, but what's been apparent starting at the end of September is that in response to this dollar shortage repo market situation, that the Fed ha has no choice and that they realize that. And so they've, they've expanded their balance sheet $400 billion since September, and they're just going to keep expanding as long as these dollar shortage symptoms continue to show up. Because if they don't, it, it really does risk global financial collapse because of the size of, of, of the euro dollar market. Again, it's very clear we are starting to see clear cracks in the system. Now, as a Bitcoin holder, possibly as a traditional investor, what can you do? First off, I'm going to link the original source material down below in the description. Hit on over, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification. But to put this in perspective, this quantitative easing, this cutting of the interest rates, fiat injections, it's not just the USA. I'm going to read you some perspective from Quant Fund Manager Plan B. But before that, if not just the US, just how big is this? So how does the West, rest of the world react and how does everyone react to the US? Does, is everyone just acting independently? Is the US leading? You know, how does this all kind of interlink? So they, generally speaking, they all have to kind of line up not too far away from one another. But, but, but what you do know is that the whole world is cutting interest rates and juicing quantitative easing to the extent they can do QE. There's, there's you know, smaller countries can't really do it. Because if they did it, their currency would collapse. So you have to be, you have to have some amount of sort of like, I don't know, you need to be a reputable country or, or a, a, a country in quote unquote good standing. But I mean, just in 2019, Denmark cut interest rates, the Eurozone cut interest rates, Sweden cut interest rates, Australia cut, New Zealand cut, Thailand cut, South Korea cut, we cut, uh, Chile cut. Hong Kong cut, Peru cut, Saudi Arabia cut, Malaysia cut, the Philippines cut, China cut, Indonesia cut, Brazil cut, India cut, uh, Mexico cut, Turkey cut, South Africa cut. And they, they, they cut for good reason, because when there's a slowdown, like you saw starting in the back part of 2018, a kind of global growth slowdown that you saw in in, in 2018 that accelerated sort of in 2019. And when we were in the summer of, of just, just six months ago, there was people's view on the likelihood of a recession coming in the next 12 months had, had increased significantly. So the U.S. is showing more cracks, while in many other places in the rest of the world, it's cracked. It's broken. Check this out from Plan B Quant Fund Manager. Where I live, somewhere maybe in Sweden or Eastern European, wherever, where I live, the entire yield curve is negative. One year interest rate, five year, 10 year, 30 year, all below zero. Soon in the US too. This is a problem because banks already charge negative rates on savings accounts. Also, pension funds have trouble making enough return. 
If that's confusing to you, just know these are the problems that happen when governments can print money and when we seal yield curve inversion, well, that's the sign of the next recession, historically. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Austin, I've heard of the sky is falling narrative before. We've seen major market corrections before. The housing crisis of 2007. It was bad, but we survived. So what's the problem? Well, the proverbial can, it's a lot further down the road this time. And this easing cycle, this time it's different. The, the part that is important to realize is that you're starting this, this easing cycle from, from such a further down point than we ever have before in the history of central banking. <laughs> and again, not hyperbole. Like we've, we've, we've never been in a spot before where you're starting an easing cycle with $13 trillion of negative yielding sovereign debt. Like when we started easing in 2007, there was no dollars of negative yielding sovereign debt in the world. And, and interest rates were 5%, 6%, 8%, you know, depending on where, you know, where, where you looked in the world. And so, so, so there's just way less, you know, sort of, sort of ammo left from a monetary policy side to be able to go and do things to support global growth, which is, which is why you're seeing this pickup in, in, in fiscal policy type of stuff. Here's the point. If you're asking me, Austin, what's Bitcoin's biggest threat? What could potentially stop Bitcoin? I would say that it's governments having good central bank fiscal policy. Governments, the Fed, you know, cutting back, potentially doing the right thing. But the problem is, and yes, they're injecting money to help the economy in the short term, they can't cut back anymore. Now when every single other government in the world is pumping fiat into their economy, nobody's really backing down. I think this price journey, this network effect that we've seen over the last decade, the last 11 years with Bitcoin, is the world really trying to wrap their head around this new, non-sovereign, decentralized, permissionless, fixed supply form of money. To share with you some perspective, reminder, if the worst should happen, if the economy crashes, whenever that may be, Bitcoin was created so that if banks refuse to give you your money because people have pulled too much cash out, you can still transact if you have Bitcoin. Look up fractional reserve banking, especially if the stock market crash continues in this next year. If you appreciate this content, give this video a like. Let's me know that I should keep going. Keep making a video every day. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And like always, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and by the way, let me, let me leave you with one last clip. One last clip of just some perspective on kicking the can down the road. So what's going to happen then? Because, you know, as you said, central banks can't really tighten, right? So what's going to happen with monetary policy? Is it just going to continue until, you know, it explodes? What's going to happen here? Yeah. So 2018 showed us that central banks can't tighten. Assets across the board are just, they're too dependent on, on this cheap money. And the U.S. government can't pay higher interest rates. They have way too much debt to service. It's, it's pretty simple arithmetic. To run out, if 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 the United States has to, you know, we're you know we've got a trillion dollar deficit, almost a trillion last year or in 2018, a trillion in 19, it'll be a trillion in 2020, and the Congressional Budget Office is predicting that it'll be a trillion dollar deficit every year for the next 10 years, which means it's going to be every year for the rest of history. And when you're having to pay interest rates on all that money you're borrowing. Like the math just doesn't work paying 5%, 6%, which used to be normal interest rates, you know, back in the 70s and 80s. Because when there's a slowdown, like you saw starting in the back part of 2018, a kind of global growth slowdown that you saw in, in, in 2018 that accelerated sort of in 2019. And when we were in the summer of, of just, just six months ago, there was people's view on the likelihood of a recession coming in the next 12 months had, had increased significantly.